how is it going guys it's eclipse here and today we are looking at the american tech tree line we're going to be reviewing the entire line today here on world of tanks and of course we'll be looking at all of the different tech trees within the american tech tree uh giving my opinion on all of them the only tank i haven't got so far is the m48a5 pattern but i have played it before on a different account however We'll be giving my full review, my full rundown as to which tanks are best for beginners, the best tanks for players that have played this game, experienced players, the kind of more intricate novelties of some of the tanks, and ultimately a full review of my favourites that are within this entire tech tree. Now, if this is something that you're interested in, then of course let me know in the comment section down below as I can review every single tech tree within World of Tanks, give you the full rundown as to the various different tanks and how to play them, and hopefully that will be good and unique and, and worth it for you guys to actually have a look now to start with we will start with the t110e4 line the beginning one on the tech tree itself and this leads on from the t56 gmc and for today's video we're not really going to cover the tier 3 and the tier 4 tanks will give a brief overview um, but ultimately as soon as you get to tier 5 that's when it really starts to become uh, more of a tier that you actually have to play through as opposed to most of the time only having to play like five games five or six games um, when you include the daily double and stuff like that so yeah we'll review from tier 5 essentially but you start off with the tier 3, the T56 GMC, this is the tank destroyer version, it's pretty rubbish to be honest with you, you're not really going to be able to do much, doesn't have very many, very much gun depression, and yeah, as soon as you get to the MAA1, which is kind of this light tank TD that has a dirt gun, and ultimately it's a tank that is um, kind of, it's heavily reliant on this derp, um, albeit you can use a different gun, so you can see that this one has a 75mm, um, that kind of is a little less derpy but it does a hell of a lot less damage and then as you go through you can get smaller ones which are fast firing and I guess that the tank can be fun uh, but ultimately you have to fire a little bit of premium ammunition if you want to be able to um, fully use this tank especially in tier 6 games where you pretty much won't have much of a chance in this thing. Of course then that leads on to the T67 in the tech tree line and this is a seal clubbing tank the one that everybody kind of wants within the game it's a tank that you have to play very much with the camouflage if you want to learn how to play more camouflage tanks in world of tanks and this is the beginning tech tree line that i would recommend using both the t67 and the hellcat which is the next in the tech tree line and they both offer these fast firing guns that also have the opportunity to use larger caliber guns the hellcat more in particular because it has this kind of 240 alpha damage gun the 90 mil i believe it is on this tank um, and you also have the 76 which is a fast firing gun so it's down to you which one you want to pick but ultimately what you can do with this tank is um, make it a full camo build you can use it very much to um, learn the game as with the camo factor that is on world of tanks console not as good as it is on world of tanks pc in terms of being able to stay hidden and all of that sort of jazz however um yeah you can definitely utilize these tanks to get their view well still concealment down as low as possible whilst increasing the vision range as well now then, you then move on to probably one of my least favourite tanks in the game, the T25-2. Not particularly a very good one, but you can kind of go through and you'll be able to kind of move on past that. It's a tier 7 that is very much one of the lowest on the tiers, uh, at which I would recommend um, in terms of a tank destroyer and learning the game. It's not really got too much of anything, and yeah, I think it's one of those that you just have to kind of grind through or alternatively do the, uh, the thing that no one likes to do and paywall right the way through to the T28 prototype, which is a tank that to begin with, when it's a stock vehicle, is terrible but gets a whole lot better. You also have a much better armour model as well that you have on this tank since I've played it which make the turret so much harder to actually pen. You can be penned through those cheeks that are either side of the gun mantlet, the gun mantlet being the red area just in front of the, or just behind the gun I should say, um, that connects on. And then you have those flat plates that you can see on the side profile, the dark red that appear to be the highest point of armour, but because it's very flat, a lot of people who have 240 millimetres of penetration or more can just go straight through those. And trust me, when you look at the penetration of the T28, 
itself if you load premium ammunition you can go through an opposing t28 very easily of course you then have the cupolas on the top of the tank which get penned and the side of the armor is pretty terrible as well so you get penned a lot in that area and actually because of the raised back of the tank you can get penned through that as well so yeah a tank that the armor model is kind of effective but can be a little bit tedious at times but ultimately this tank with the top gun that you can get on this 400 alpha uh, it's kind of where it starts to become a little bit more fun. Then moving on, we then have the T30. This is the tank that I still actually own in the game. It's a tank that I decided to actually three mark within the game. I found it really, really fun. Is it super overpowered? No. But to be honest with you, at tier 9, tank destroyers don't tend to be that overpowered, at least uh, on all of the tech tree lines, so there's nothing really different there. You've also got this um, 750 alpha damage gun, the 155mm, the first in the tech tree line to be able to get this. It's really, really fun to use. Uh, 0.35 accuracy with all of the perks that we've got equipped I think we have even got uh, improved ventilation you can't put stabilizers on this which is a little bit unfortunate because that would increase the accuracy uh, no end and <laughs> allow you to play it a little bit more uh, accurately and be able to kind of snipe shots a little bit more doesn't really matter though because this tank is all about the turret armor it is your traditional American uh, tank because it has the turret armor to kind of back it up and you can use this on a ridge line to be very very effective with the uh, 10 degrees of gun depression or it might even be 8 degrees yep 10 degrees there you go um, and that means that you can effectively get on ridge lines use the 750 alpha poke over that ridge deal your damage pull back down that ridge uh, and then you can kind of move on of course you have the option to use the 400 millimeter or 400 damage even the 120 millimeter cannon to be able to you know, kind of increase your damage per minute because the 750 kind of sucks but that doesn't really matter that much because with the 120 you can smash out dpm very nicely and to be honest with you it's down to personal preference i think when i was three marking this tank i used the top gun but that was just because i felt like i could pretty much get uh, very easy penetrations with a, an amazing 276 millimeters of penetration on your standard rounds and with your apcr it's even more which made this tank very very fun for me personally and of course it's always nice when you're slapping opponents for 750 then you move on to in the next in the tech tree line the t110e4 which is of course right next to it this is a tank that has been super competitive uh, within the most recent years it's probably not as competitive as it once was since all of the tier 10s have basically been buffed to kind of compete with these sort of tanks but it is essentially a more heavy tank destroyer, one that gets involved in the front lines and you can play it very, very nicely. And it is kind of one of those that I've always had good games in. I don't enjoy it as much as some other tanks because it is slow to a degree, 35 kilometers an hour, nothing too special there. But yeah, a decent tank nonetheless. Now, moving on to the second tank destroyer tech tree line that leads up to the T110E3, which we'll cover in just a minute. This starts off with the T40. Now, the T40 is actually a tier 4 worth noting because this thing has a howitzer and this howitzer derps. This thing is disgusting at tier 4. Should you be jumping down to tier 4 to play it? Absolutely not. It's not worth it like that, but nonetheless, a brilliant tank to actually play. Then we move on to the Wolverine, a tank that is... Uh, they're kind of like the heavier versions of the T67 and the Hellcat in the form of the Wolverine and the Jackson respectively um, and these tanks are, are kind of just worse versions they're not as fast not as nimble and to be honest with you they should really be the ones that lead to the T25-2 because they are very very similar especially the Jackson to the T25-2 uh, would probably be more of a, a just representation of what the T25-2 will be however both tanks fantastic um, if you can use their guns right and you can get hold of the camouflage but yeah nonetheless better or worse than the Hellcat and in fact if I was going towards the T110E3 I would do the route that I had did do which was to go for the T25-2 and then go to the T28 and through that way as opposed to going for the Wolverine and the Jackson route but yeah I might pick these up give them a go and actually test them out myself to see if I do enjoy them nonetheless anyway Moving on in the tech tree line, we then have the T25AT, which is a tank that is very bad. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, this thing is awful, um, and most people will have probably gold skipped this thing, or alternatively just kind of gone a different route. Yes, you do get 320 alpha damage, 
And in fact, the T28 was a tank that I really enjoyed, even though I probably shouldn't have. It is kind of one of those that you can get to grips with and, and have a few very good games. But ultimately, this tier 8 tank destroyer is limited by the speed and the maneuverability and also the fact that sometimes you just cannot impact the game quick enough to secure a victory. And so that's probably why you end up with a lower win rate in this tank comparatively to some of the other tanks in the game. However, the one saving grace for this tank is that once you've ground through all of the XP required to get to the T95, you're rewarded with an amazing tank. The T95 is so underpowered within World of Tanks console, or not underpowered, but underrated even. Sorry, the T95 is a very, very strong candidate at tier 9 as a tank destroyer, and in fact, probably the better of the two being the T30 and the T95. The T95 have actually effective armor. It has the 750 alpha damage that the T30 has. Yes, it doesn't have a turret. Yes, it's slightly slower. But if you can get this thing into a position where you can be just an aggressive T95, it's amazing. And of course, if you want to check out any of these reviews that I've already done of certain of these tanks, we've done the T124, we've done the T30, we've done the T95, I think we've done the T28, the Hellcat, the T67, various ones of these tanks. We've all done tank reviews and you can find them in the gameplay and tank reviews playlist. Just look at the thumbnails. They are literally the tanks that we have. Um, I think we've done a few on the T95, in fact, because this tank is amazing. Um, and then this leads on to probably the worst tank in the tech tree line, or albeit the T110E3 and this is a tank that I hate. I think it's just a BTEC version of the T110E4. For those of you that don't know what that term means, it's a worse version of the T110E4. Um, it's just basically a slower Yes, it has a little bit more armor that actually kind of works from the front, but then like 90% of the time you never get engaged from the front anyway in this thing. It means that you cannot side scrape around corners very well. Yes, you could potentially, but as soon as you start trying to move around a corner, people just leave. And by the time you've actually got into a nice flexible position, they've already left and come around the side of you anyway. So yeah, not much point in my kind of opinion in playing this over the E4, but that's just my personal opinion, and of course you are <laughs> entitled to your own opinion in the comment section down below, and I'm sure we'll see various different things that where you disagree with some of these tech tree lines. And I want to take this time in this video is to actually kind of give a good overview of all of the tanks, the ones I've really enjoyed throughout playing the game, because I've almost fully researched the entire American tech tree, except from the M48 pattern, which is kind of the, the route that we're looking at now up to the M48 A5 pattern here. And we start off with the tier 4, the HMC M8. It's a terrible tank. It's just these low tier tier 4s. They're awful. Not as bad as the M3 Lee, but there we go. Then you move on to the M4 Sherman, probably one of the most notable tanks in the American tech tree in terms of people that have probably never played World of Tanks. This is probably a tank that you knew before playing or investing any time in looking at any American tank in both historical sense and also gameplay wise. It's one of the most iconic and of course most people will be going towards this just for the pure fact of knowing the tank itself. And then that leads on to the M4 Sherman Jumbo. Both these tanks have this howitzer that you can use and it actually isn't terrible. Um, the howitzer does have 410 alpha and actually with the premium ammunition that you can get in the tank it's actually usable. However, I wouldn't really recommend it because you have to fire a lot of premium rounds pretty much exclusively if you want to make it work properly and it gets very very expensive because I think the rounds in this tank and considering it's not a premium, costs about like 6,000 silver every single round and you can fire easily 10 shots per game and you're not earning that much silver back. Um, so yeah, it's very expensive to play. Same with the Jumbo, it leads on to both the Sherman Jumbo and the Sherman itself, the Easy 8 both of the tanks are kind of novel in the way that they play. The Sherman Jumbo has better armor model, which means that you can kind of be a little bit more um, aggressive. The M4 Easy 8 is a tank that is kind of I don't know, it's just not a tank I've really got along with. Um, I think you can use it very well, you can do well in it, but it's very uh, unflexible in my personal opinion, which makes the tank very difficult to use. I personally didn't really play this tank um, since I went through a different route to be able to uh, get to the Pershing. I think I actually went the M4A3 E2 jumbo to be able to get there, and you can see that um, as we go through, you can see what we've unlocked. Of course, this one is probably the easier route for for a new player because you have armor as opposed to playing a pretty much paper tank in the Easy 8. But nonetheless, you then move on to a fantastic
fantastic tank if you get the, in the hands of an experienced player. And even a non-experienced player can learn a lot from playing the T20, which is the tier 7 medium. This one is amazing. Uh, I think it's very underrated. Do I think it's overpowered? Do I think it's going to be carrying games left, right and centre? No, but it can be used very, very well. And I really enjoyed it. I think a lot of people do not understand that the T20 is amazing in the game. And especially when you use it with the top gun that you can get in this thing. I actually three marked it. That shows you how much I actually liked it. Um, you can see the 105 is a fantastic use on this tank. And the 90 mil, I think, is the one that I actually went with just for the DPM and more consistent damage that you can deal with the t20 keeping permanently tracking people and i think we actually have a replay back from post 6.0 in the t20 and the third mark gameplay before i really started doing youtube seriously so you can always go back and have a look at it but i can't promise the quality is probably as good as it is now even if the quality now is not that great i don't know but nonetheless it moves on to the pershing which is the pershing is amazing once again this entire tank line from tier 7 all the way up to tier 10 is fantastic and i can wholeheartedly say that this entire tech tree line is very underrated people don't understand how good these tanks can be in the right matchup and you can see here the pershing it's a tank that I'm currently grinding through. It's a tank that I'm not far off of getting the Korean pattern. We're, we are literally fully uh, researched. It's just a case of playing probably like 40 games to get the pattern. Uh, and then we'll get that in the bank. Maybe even less because I've got times 5 XP boosters that I can just use anyway at the moment. So we'll just grind through this, get as much as possible. Uh, and try and actually do a full video on the M48A5 pattern, the tier 10 version. And of course this one as we go through. So the Pershing itself... 240 alpha damage per shot the turret armor of the thing is actually pretty decent so you can have some good games i really do hope that you guys try out this tank uh, and this tank line in general so really really fun to play super super uh, important that you guys test these out and learn because these are fantastic tanks for learning the game and improving in general then of course leading on to the m46 pattern just basically a better version of the pershing and then you lead on to the m48 5 which is very much the same sort of model it's probably for a all-round medium tank, one that can do pretty much everything. It can spot, it can use somewhat of its armour to a degree other than the cupola on top and sometimes you just get basically crumbed on by a lot of the uh, American <laughs> tank destroyers like the E4 and stuff who load the premium ammunition to just go straight through the turret nonetheless. But really, really great medium tank. Then we move down to the heavy tanks going on from the M3 Lee, which is a very bad tank, although I actually really enjoyed it somehow i don't quite know how but there you go then we get the t1 heavy which is amazing it's obviously one of been vamped up to actually be able to use the multi-turreted system that we now have in world of tanks console so you can use that if you really want to but the t1 heavy is amazing anyway and it can definitely carry games by itself just because of the hit points the gun the rapid fire nature that this thing has um, and then yeah a really really amazing tier 5 and then goes on to the m6 which once again is an amazing tank as well both of them are really really uh, kind of competitive leading on to probably the best tier for tier tank in the american heavy tech tree line the t29 which is an iconic tank for any of you that have played world of tanks uh, whether that be on pc or console if you're just wanting a full rundown then they're very similar anyway but you can see this is a very iconic shape its turret armor is amazing similar to that of the t30 which we covered earlier um, really really strong hull armor is trash to be honest you get penned by everything but then again most heavies do anyway especially if you compare it to something like a tiger this thing is beyond better in terms of its armor model and it has 320 alpha damage that you can kick out in this thing and at a very rapid pace as well for a heavy tank very decent in general probably one of my favorite tier 7 heavies in the game and yeah very easy grind as well it doesn't necessarily take too much time and then going on from the T29, you go to the T32, which you can see here. Uh, this one is a bit more unique. Uh, the stock grind is terrible, I'm not going to lie. Then you get the top turret, which makes this thing so much better, and with the top engine as well. And then once you've got that, you kind of then can use this thing as you should. This was one of the first tech tree lines that I actually went down to be able to get the T110E5. Um, and it, it can be very played very, very well. You get 320 Alpha at the, as the top gun and then it leads on
on to the M103, which is the next tank in the tech tree line. You can see here, and this is a tank that is probably underrated as a heavy at tier 9. I, in fact, did this when I was very new to the game, probably only having played about 5k games or something like that. I'd played um, the M103, tried to three mark basically all of the tier 9 heavies, which I think I got most of the way, albeit there's a few more now in the game, but nonetheless it was part of like the E75 M103 kind of meta back in the day. But yeah, really, really fun tank to play once you get it fully upgraded as well. The turret, definitely once you get that upgraded, it's so much better, but the stock turret is, is trash. And even when you get the full turret, the kind of cupola on the top and also the very top of the tank is paper, so people can actually pen you straight through the top of the tank which is yeah very annoying but once you get over the fact of that and being able to raise your gun up to avoid them hitting your cupola and stuff like that um, then it can be very very fun to play and of course you get a very consistent gun as with all of the American heavy tanks leading on to the T125 which in my personal opinion is one of my favorite heavies in the game hence why I did decide to actually three mark this thing um, I really really enjoyed the grind of playing the T125 when I was going for the third mark very kind of unique tank in terms of being a more medium heavy that kind of runs into position gets up there up close and personal uses the great gun handling that this thing has 0.25 accuracy with the uh, vertical stabilizers and some of the other perks that you can put in this thing I don't have a commander in it so you can't see like the full stats at the end of it but yeah nonetheless T125 still a fairly competitive tank that can still be used really really well and I think we showcased the T125 recently in a video on the channel which I will kind of hope to that you go back and have a look at if you want any specific tanks in here uh, you'll be able to find them there. Now then, moving on, I appreciate this is a long video, but I think it's important that we go through all of the tech tree and it will become a good place for you to kind of come back and evaluate the tech tree lines uh, as and when you need to. If you want to look at a different new tech tree line, in my opinion, overall, I'll give that at the end as to which ones I think are the best um, as we go through as well. And of course, this will be done for all of the tech tree lines in World of Tanks console so far. So. Moving on, we then have the most toxic class that unfortunately I have actually gone down within World of Tanks, which is the artillery class. Now then, M37, terrible. M41, little bit better. M44, disgustingly overpowered and probably shouldn't be in the game. 700 alpha hits you every single bloody time, especially when you're playing tier 6. Um, or even when you're playing tier 8, this thing pens you for because of the 240 heat pen that this thing fires. It's disgusting hate it with a passion as well and then it moves on to the m12 which gets the high alpha damage that all of the americans do once you get fully upgraded at least um, i think when you get fully upgraded you actually get more alpha i think that you get 1100 as opposed to 950 or something like that but yeah pretty annoying and then you get the m4043 which is yeah, a very, very annoying tank to come up against and this thing can take a lot of your hit points even when it misses you because it gets the 203mm howitzer with 1850 hit points and I've been one shot a few times recently by this thing in the game. And then you move on to quite possibly the more f fun aspect artillery piece that can go all in using AP rounds, 241 millimeters of penetration on the AP rounds, 1450 alpha, which makes this one of the highest alpha uh, kind of AP round tanks in the game. And that means that, yeah, I've played it as a tank destroyer many a time and actually shotgun people so easily with this thing. And then it leads on to the T92 HMC, the top tier daddy, probably the best artillery piece in World of Tanks console because of the fact it can one shot basically everything with its HE rounds. And you can load premium HE, which basically gets splash damage that means you can pen things very very easily and of course because you're an artillery piece you're actually aiming down onto the top of tanks the armor on the top of a tank is so much worse than on the uh, frontal aspect if you're looking straight at it which means that 120 millimeters of penetration on a artillery might be the same as having like 250 millimeters on something like the t125 for example if you're firing at a specific tank um, and of course if you then decide oh I'm going to load the AP rounds you get 370 millimeters of penetration with 1800 alpha and boy oh boy have I used the AP rounds in this thing with the advanced loader perk to be able to swap between both the HE or the premium HE because there's no point in firing standard HE because there's literally no reason why you would um, 
and therefore yeah the ap and the he switch is so so vital in an artillery piece that's why i use it as the equipment so there you go basically the worst artillery in world of tanks console as in the strongest and worst to come up against in the game nonetheless you go down to tier four as the steward as we lead on to the light tank line and then you move on to the chaffee the tier five both fantastic well not both but the chaffee itself is an amazing tank then leads on to the t37 kind of super chaffee if you've seen it on pc this was actually originally the chaffee in the chaffee that's currently there was just called the m24 i believe but they rejigged a load of things and basically the t the chaffee original became the t37 and this became the actual chaffee yeah a weird kind of mix up but there you go if you were there when this was originally called the chaffee then you're probably a veteran of world of tanks console nonetheless both of these tanks very very fun light tanks to play and hopefully you enjoy actually playing through these you then land on to the t71 cmcd a tank that i don't really like it's got a buff recently makes it a little bit better but it's the non-auto loading version of the t71 da which is just a better version in my personal opinion this thing just doesn't have it it's yeah it's not very good then we lead on to the m41 walker bulldog which is a tank that i played when it was a tier 7 um, and this thing had an auto loader it doesn't anymore it actually has a standard normal gun um, that can fire pretty quickly albeit uh, has very good kind of spotting potential it's pretty fast but it is a big boxy uh, tank and that is kind of what all of the american light tanks are like they're not very slim profile they're more like medium light tanks although they are traditional lights in the sense of how fast they can go but they're very boxy and so get hit very easily um, and then you move on to the t49 the derp star the one that kind of is a <laughs> a meme if you use the 152 millimeter which i would never recommend ever if you actually want to have competitive games in this thing yes i'm sure you'll see a, a t49 with the derp gun doing like 5k at some point but it's very very unlikely that you can consistently do that sort of damage with this tank with the derp so i would use the 90 mil and use it as more of a spotting support tank and then you lead on to the Sheridan, of which I've not played too much and we haven't managed to unlock the Derp. However, that will feature in a video in not too long where we use the Sheridan with the Derp, hopefully uh, to good effect, although I'm not entirely sure. Now then, we then go down to Tier 5 for the heavy tank or the alternate autoloading heavy tank in the T57 and you start with the Tier 5 M7 very bad then you move on to the t21 which is kind of interesting but it's kind of like a t20 but at tier six and just not as good tier for tier and then you move on to the auto loading light tank very much exactly the same as the t71 cmcd but an auto loading version if you've ever played the light the lycan the tier 7 american premium tank you'll know exactly what this tank is like so you can try that out um, and it might be up to your standard and then you move on to the t69 this was a tank that is very much lackluster due to the penetration kind of negatives that this tank has haven't actually played it myself but i know grinding to the top gun was very painful because you can see the penetration differences between the stock gun and the top gun that you can see here even the top gun is pretty bad for a tier 8 when you're coming up against tier 10s you can see even the premium ammunition of the stock gun is only 210 millimeters which is very hard to come up against any tier 10s with that sort of penetration let alone having to actually lose money every game and then you move on to the T54 E1, which is the TN9, and this tank is one that is oh, it's very painful as a stock gun, um, and this thing is pretty much terrible, especially with the horsepower that you don't have at the beginning, um, and that makes it even worse. So yeah, hopefully you guys can kind of get your way to the top package as quickly as possible, use as many of those XP boosters that you have in your garage to get there, and it will be a hell of a lot less painful, and you also get a decent gun once you get there as well with a 400 or a 390 alpha and a four shot auto loading clip, I believe, off the top of my head, but you'll have to fact check me on that. Either way, I played this when I was a little newer to the game and probably didn't do anywhere near as good and that is why you can actually see me getting the t157 heavy without even unlocking the t71 da 
the or the T69, and that is because the M41 Walker Bulldog used to lead onto the T54E1 Tech Tree line, which meant that you could get the T57 Heavy that way, and hence why I've not even unlocked the tanks previously, and there's no way or no feasible way that you could ever be able to do this, so it's kind of like a, a little tribute to before the tank game became possible to do this so i don't even know if i'm going to fully research these there's probably no point other than the fact of getting an achievement as they're not particularly great tanks anyway and i can just play these two but of course let me know in the comment section down below what you think of these tanks and before we kind of end up this video let's give my opinion on the best tanks in the american tech tree so you know instantly and you can go back to the section regarding each of the tanks now t124 is the best american tank destroyer in my personal opinion the one that you should get first if you want a kind of middle finger tank destroyer that you can kind of go well i have armor and you're going to take a 750 alpha damage hit then i wouldn't go with the t30 i'd go with the t95 so it's almost worth grinding all the way up to the tier 9 in the american tank destroyer non-turreted tech tree just to get the t95 don't even bother if you're not interested in t123 it's actually worth it just for the t95 and then you've got the medium tank line which is a very kind of it's a competitive medium tank line in regards to the holistic view of all of the tech trees in world of tanks it's not a bad medium tank tech tree line to go down it's very much an all-rounder and i really do think you can learn a lot from playing these tanks probably not the best starting tech tree line to go down but there you go then you've got the t125 yet again a very holistic heavy tank it's very much like all of the media well all of the american tanks in world of tanks um and it's one that yet again i probably wouldn't go down to begin with although to be honest with you the t29 is a brilliant starter tank but as you kind of get further on it becomes less great for new players because there's a few nuances to playing them um but yeah either way you could be a new player and play these but if you're a more experienced player you will fully ad take advantage of the t125 and have fantastic games artillery piece we've talked about them before they are the best in the game in terms of artilleries um but they're getting nerfed soon so haha -ha, for any of you wanting to play this overpowered tier 10 tank artillery tank destroyer medium light tank artillery hybrid disgusting tank that the t92 is and then you've got the probably one of the worst american well one of the worst light tanks in the game which is the sheridan it just doesn't quite have everything it's not particularly that fast it's very boxy um its gun is good but not particularly very good for like constant damage yeah i'm not entirely sure that i think the sheridan is brilliant but it can be played very well nonetheless and you know if you can make it work with the derp gun then hats off to you and of course it is the only light tank that you can play with the derp other than the tusk which is a mercenary contract that you have to actually unlock and then the t57 heavy my favorite vehicle in the game from the american tech tree uh, in my personal opinion because of the fact it has this 1600 alpha with the auto loading four shot 400 alpha damage gun that has 250 good penetration on its standard rounds and 340 on its heat rounds very competitive it's a very much a heavy tank that you can kind of stick your middle finger up at anyone that decides that they're going to yolo you in this thing because it definitely doesn't end up being a good thing for them because they take the 1600 alpha very nicely and of course you probably only take a couple in return so yeah really really fun at tanks to play of course the american tech tree is filled with premium tanks for those of you interested in those i will cover all of the american premium tanks in the game at a later date but we are currently just looking at tech trees for this set of videos and the tech tree reviews and of course let me know in the comment section down below what is the next tech tree line that you want me to cover of course in terms of my own personal progression through the tech trees i have got basically completed the british tank tree line um, other than the artillery piece so we'll probably be covering that next but of course if you want to interject and say no do this tank tree tech tree line first then i will do and give my opinion even if i don't have all of the tanks in the tech tree so yeah very very good and hopefully you enjoyed this video it was a long one and took a little bit of time to actually do so i hope you appreciate that and of course if you haven't already subscribe and check out some of the other how-to guides how to get better at world of tanks and the gameplay and tank reviews playlist both of which playlists will be linked on the screen right now thank you very much for watching